Hello, welcome to this video on supply chain management. In this case, we're going to discuss um, risk pooling. Risk pooling is one of the most important strategies in supply chain because it allows the organization to achieve uh, its goals in terms of for customer service by um, still keeping cost effective uh, levels of inventory. Um, these uh, methodologies uh, need to take into consideration the uh, uncertainty in the demand and we measure that uncertainty by means of the standard deviation and um, the standard deviation allows us to estimate the proper levels for the safety stock. So we're going to discuss these um, approaches. Uh, naturally, since we're talking about supply chain, it is not an isolated problem that we're trying to solve right now, but um, the integration of several factors together uh, and by considering all these factors together, uh, we achieve a better solution than just uh, solving for one uh, aspect of the different elements in the supply chain. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and um, we we'll start now. Very good. So let's consider a situation in which you know two um, events which have a mu, say event A, mu is the average, and um, this is the average for a particular event, say for instance, or for a set of possible events, say for instance the average demand for product A, and then you have the average for product B. We can estimate the total average demand, if this is what we're looking for, the total average demand for these two products by simply adding the average of A plus the average of B. In other words, the average of both together is equal to the summation of both averages. Put in some numbers, let's say product A has an average demand of 75 and the average demand of B is 105. Then the combined average is 180. And that's the total number of units that you would uh, uh, expect to have. Now, these could represent, say for instance, two different locations. The average demand for location A and the average demand for location B. And the combined expected average of demand of these two locations, because one is 75 and the other is 105, then the combined demand, if you were not to have different locations but a single location, you would expect to have a total demand of 180. Similarly, if these were not locations, but two different products that do not um, uh, have any conflict, they don't have what we call a covariance between them, and, and the demand would be what we call it's independent, then um, this, the summation of both would add to the same amount. Let's say that you're producing... Um, uh, Seepers for uh, pants or seepers for uh, for girls, and then zipper for pants for for boys, and then the total number of seepers that you would need would be uh, the the total that you need for say boys and girls. So th the same concept works regardless of the um, nature. If we're talking about product or we're talking about um, locations now what happens with the with the concept of the variance is this when you have the variance of a and the variance of b and if they are independent then the variance of a plus b is equal to 
the variance of A plus the variance of B. But the computation of the of the safety inventory does not depend directly on variance, but it's is directly related to the standard deviation, and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So what we need to do is we need to compute the standard deviation, and the standard deviation of a plus b is now in case of independence. The, the square root of the standard deviation of A plus the standard deviation, I mean the variance of A plus the variance of B, all that square root. Now that this makes a significant difference because say for instance you have a product which, which has um, standard deviation of 2 and the other product has a standard deviation, well, let's say a standard deviation of 20, and the other has standard deviation of also 20. Now, the what is going to be the standard deviation is not going to be 40, it's not going to be 20 plus 20. Let's see how much is it going to be. Is it going to be more or is it going to be less? This is going to be 20 square plus 20 square and this is uh, 20 times 20 is 400 400 times 2 is square root of 800 And let's see, square root of 800. Eight hundred square root is twenty eight point twenty eight. So As you can see, the effect of combining these two into a single location, or, or the effect of both of them combined, the standard deviation, it is not 40, it's not 2 times 20, it's only 28.28. And that's the key to achieve risk pooling, because now this is what would happen. In the computation of the safety stock, we need to take into consideration how much uh, we are expecting to cover in terms of the uncertainty. Um, if we use a normal distribution to make these computations, we know that 50% of the area of, uh, under the curve is to the left-hand side of the mean. If we want to achieve um, 97% of the um, of the uh, customer service, we would need to have two standard deviations. We want to achieve 84.13 uh, uh, customer service, and customer service understood as the customer can find the order um, with 84% um, chance. We would have to have the the amount of inventory that is needed for that number of standard deviations. So, 84.13 it is related to one standard deviation. 97.72 is related to two standard deviations, and um, that would uh, if we don't have any safety stock, then we have 50 50 chances of having uh, the customer satisfied on a particular period. So um, what we would like to have is one standard deviation. So let's see how that works. From our previous computations, 
we figured out that if we had a standard deviation of 20 and 20 for two different locations, then that would mean that this, if we want to have an 84.13 uh, customer service, 80.13 customer service, that is 84. 80, 4.13 of the time the customers will find the product that they want then we would need to have one standard deviation and that means that if you have two separate warehouses each one of them having a standard deviation a demand with a standard deviation of 20 units you would need to have 20 units in the first warehouse plus 20 units in the second warehouse and you would have to keep a total safety inventory combined into different locations of 40. However, if you have a centralized warehouse, that means that when you don't order one, when the customer does not want uh, on region, on the region served by or the original first uh, warehouse, could be that, they, that the customer from the other region would be ordering the product and the variation cancel each other so we know that the other is going to come more um, with more confidence so instead of having that we would need just uh, 28.28 units for safety inventory this is with two warehouses this is with one warehouse What would happen if you have the demand, uh, the the, the uh, customer service that you want is 97.2. To achieve 97.2, that is 97% of the time you want the customer to find the product, you need two standard deviations. So you would need 20 plus 20 uh, times 2 which is uh, 80 in the case of two warehouses in the case of a centralized warehouse you will need two times 28.28 which is uh, 28.28 times 2 56.56 the savings in the first case it's uh, roughly speaking um, 11 point um, 72 units in this case the savings are 24.44 units in in savings of inventory that is not needed now and we will achieve exactly the same customer service in terms of availability naturally speaking the uh, the um, the issue becomes uh, the distance for the uh, and therefore the delivery time for the customer so that's a negotiation that we need to have should we have warehouses that are closer to the or, or retail store that are closer to the to the customer or not uh, but certainly having uh, centralized operations reduces the cost while not reducing the customer service in terms of product availability we're going to discuss more of these concepts in the next video.